Well, let's get thoughts of the government minister on all of the day's news. We've got the energy secretary, Grant Shapps, who joins me now. Uh, morning to you. Uh, what do you make of Donald Trump's new charges? Uh, well, you know, um, you wake up to these things uh, most most mornings, it, it seems to me. I, I leave it to the American judicial um, system. Uh, I think the main point to make really is that actually our, our relationship with the US uh, goes way beyond any individual or any particular administration. Um, and it, it is, has been in, in place for many, many uh, decades, indeed centuries now. So, uh, you know, I, I will stick to the overall relationship, I think, rather than uh, one individual. OK. Um, you're here to talk to us today because you have convened a summit to talk to the energy industry today. Um, isn't it utter hypocrisy for a government that's granted new licences for oil and gas exploration in the North Sea? Licences that were against the advice of the International Energy Agency, the UN Secretary General, scientists, even Conservative MPs and Lords. Isn't it hypocrisy for you to then sit here and say that you care about net zero and, and low carbon projects? No, because if you care about getting to net zero, as we do, and we're legally committed to getting there, then you have to have a plan to get there. Unless you're going to tell people watching your programme, please don't switch on your gas boilers this winter. Please don't drive your petrol car if you haven't switched over to electric yet. Unless you're going to tell people that, then you're going to actually have to import the difference between uh, what we make ourselves or dig ourselves out of the North Sea uh, and the gas and oil that we need. Mm. And as soon as you do that, but, but you're in danger of, of importing... what we use comes from the North Sea. So it's disingenuous about... to say that without, without, the, without this drilling that we're not going to have any gas or oil in the UK, isn't it? No, no, of course, we'll import the difference. So uh, this is exactly the point I'm making. We'll import the difference. And when you do that, be aware that our principal way of making up the gap is through liquid natu natural gas, LNG, and it contains four times the amount of carbon as the gas that we can actually uh, bring into this country uh, ourselves from our own resources. So not only would it mean uh, that we are at the behest of foreign nations, not only would it mean that 200,000 people who work in the oil and gas industry's jobs will gradually be put at risk, not only would it mean we wouldn't get billions of pounds of taxation uh, from those oil and gas companies, Worst of all, it would also mean we would quadruple the amount of CO2 coming into the country. It would be a mad policy not to grant these oil and gas licences. We're doing it because it gives us energy security, British energy, energy made here in the UK, and because it actually decreases, not increases, the amount of carbon. How, how much of the gas that we produce in the UK is actually sold in the UK and is actually used here? So there is a mix. That's absolutely true. But what's important here figures, is... The, because it seems that scientists have tried to get these figures out of the government for a long time and have been unable to. Yes. The, re the reason it's... I, I can tell you, actually, because I was, yesterday I was in Teesside uh, at uh, a, one of our major gas terminals where they take gas from 30 different fields in the North Sea and they process it. And I was actually having this discussion with them. The reason why it's a complicated figure is some of it is processed and exported uh, and then refined and re-imported. So gas and oil doesn't flow in a single direction. It also varies all the time with those pipelines that we have set up uh, across the uh, channel, for example. So that's why it's not so straightforward. But in, indeed. It is undoubtedly... so, so can you confirm how much, how much of, the, of, of the energy that we're going to get out of these new fields is going to be used or sold in the UK? Well, so, because that's so the same, the isn't to, it? That's going to, to be this... shared around the world. Yeah. The, the way to understand this marketplace is if we are not extracting it, and to be clear, we will have to make up the marginal difference in other ways. And predominantly, that will be through uh, LNG, which is the natural gas imports. And when we do that, that is when we end up with all that additional four times the amount of carbon. So I'm not being evasive about it. The reality is, if we don't uh, if we don't dig that ourselves, we still have the requirement for oil and gas. It is going to have to come from somewhere. And the answer is we become reliant on foreign states. We've seen how problematic that is for the world. And worst of all, import all that additional CO2. So it is simply nonsensical not to use the oil and gas in a very mature uh, basin, which is in any case running out. And even extracting all this oil and gas will still have a decline of about 7% per year, but it does give us some security in the meantime. It, it, and in so terms of that security, to... though, it's, it's not the British government who's taking the, this oil and gas out. It's international companies. And, and the British government has no control over... You just said that, that you've just explained very clearly to our viewers how the market works, how the, the gas and all that's extracted 
is goes to the company and then it is distributed around the world. Some of it comes back to the UK, some of it's sold on the open market. It, it's not coming straight back to the UK. That, that is not a given. You're also not in, able, in any way able to control the price that we get for it. So you're not controlling the supply. You're not controlling the price. It's international energy companies who are. Well, Why does that give I, us I, energy I, security? I just, I, I just want to sort of make sure we're factually on the same uh, sort of uh, in the same place here. Uh, when I was looking at that uh, terminal, gas terminal yesterday in Teesside, it's connected to 30 fields in the uh, in the North Sea. Uh, that gas has to route back to the UK. There isn't another place for it to go by and large. Uh, it comes back to the UK. It is processed here and it is either used directly. Used then it's either, as I said, but primarily used here. In fact, the, the, the terminal I was at yesterday, for example, uh, processes about half of the gas which is domestically used here. So, yeah, but it's, it's a, a very big uh, part of that plan. Um, you're right. The, lots of different things. Again, this is people's understanding of oil and gas is, is limited, I, I think. A lot of oil and gas is turned into other products, for example, uh, again, yesterday at a different location. Uh, I was looking at where they uh, take some of the product from the North Sea and it gets turned into plastics. It gets turned into medical devices um, uh, and is used in in, yeah. in the NHS, for example. Well, I you guess can't people are, have those it's, People are concerned about what's in the boilers, aren't they? Yes, but um, that's not the whole of the industry. And even international, uh, even people like the IPCC, that's the international body that looks after things like climate change, even they agree that by 2050, we will still require uh, some oil uh, from uh, from places like the North Sea if it was still available. So this is not, as is sometimes presented, quite as straightforward as people like to make out. Okay. On the other hand, we haven't got very much time, so let's well, just quickly move on to, to one other story we hope to get your thoughts on. We, I don't know if you saw our exclusive story yesterday about men coming to the UK under student visas who have uh, no intention of working, studying here, uh, no intention of studying here, coming in on student visas, no intention of going home either. One man, Suresh from India, told us he's been here seven years since his visa expired, working in jobs that pay him cash in hand. Actually, I tried many, many countries, not only UK. So suddenly I got visa from UK, so that's where I came. We tried very hard to get it, but it seems that the government doesn't have any data for how many student visas have been outstayed. Why is the government not collecting this information? Yeah, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't know the answer on that specific uh, point or that specific case, of course, but... Is this a failure broadly, of the Home Secretary? Uh -huh. But broadly, I would say that, you know, this government has really proactively passed, I have to say, against Labour on every single occasion, a whole series of uh, pieces of legislation. It's not Labour who's in been in power for the last 13 years that isn't keeping you, you these figures. You need to let me end at least government. one of my sentences here, otherwise we're, this is not going to be very well, important. If I ask you about something that the government's done, it, it seems disingenuous for you to then start blaming Labour. Every time I give you an answer, you're, you're cutting across the answer. I was still answering about renewables when we watched that film. Um, but what I was point, point I was trying to make is we have been passing legislation uh, against tooth and nail opposition from the Labour Party to crack down on things like illegal migration, what happens across the channel, for example, uh, with uh, small boats and those criminal gangs, uh, with things like people using visas. And you saw just the other week the Prime Minister saying we are closing down a whole series of bogus uh, or what we consider to be bogus um, degree courses being used to attract people perhaps illegally for migration purposes. So our absolute desire is in the in the place to get this cracked. We're working very hard on it. Uh, it'd be very helpful uh, if the opposition didn't frustrate not just in the House of Commons but in their votes in the House of Lords progress on doing this all the time. Okay, we're out of time, uh, which is why we're trying to get through quite a lot. Grand Chap, Secretary of State for Energy Security and Net Zero, thanks a lot.